One of my favorite AI tools in the past year has been Custom GPTs, a mini version of ChatGPT where you could give it your own set of instructions, upload your own data and knowledge base to them. And I've covered it in many of my videos in the past year. Claude has something very similar called Claude Projects, same kind of thing with your own instructions and your own knowledge base. But a lot of people ask me, well, how do you add these custom GPTs or Claude Projects to your own website? And ChatGPT doesn't really let you do this. In order to create these, you need a paid version of ChatGPT or a paid version of Claude. And then you could go ahead and share these custom GPTs with people and they could use it on the ChatGPT website. A lot of people want to embed it on their own website or have a chat bot in their website that's powered by their own instructions and their own knowledge base. So I wanted to make this video to show you exactly how to do it. And I've partnered with one of my favorite AI platforms called Chatbase for this video. I've covered them multiple times on my channel previously too. And this does exactly that. It creates custom AI chatbots for your website where you could give it your own system instructions, you could give it your own private knowledge base, and it has other integrations too that I'll cover in this video. And this is gonna be powered by the latest ChatGPT model or cloud models, or you could even use Gemini models to power these chatbots. Now, let me show you exactly how to create these step-by-step. -step. I'll put a link to the Chatbase website in the description below this video, and you could go ahead and try it for free. They actually have a free version to make sure it's a good fit for you. And then if you decide you need more than that, you could go ahead and upgrade to one of their paid plans. Now I'll just press new chatbot right over here and you could create multiple chatbots as well. And the first part of creating these chatbots is by adding your own data sources. So data sources could be all kinds of different things. A lot of times I have PDFs that I've saved. I have Word docs that I've saved, text documents. You could go ahead and upload any of them here, but that's not the only option. You also could go to this text panel, type in any text or paste any text. You could actually link your website here and it will crawl your website. So type in your website, fetch a link. If you want your website data to lead this chatbot, this is a really interesting option right here. You could also do these Q and A, so you could add questions and answers as your data source as well. And for those of you who use Notion, we actually keep a lot of our data inside of Notion, so you could connect Notion as your data source. For this one, and for most of us, you usually wanna start with these files and upload different PDFs here. Okay, in my case, I drag and dropped 15 different Word docs, and it will give you the character count for each document over here. And these are transcripts from videos that I have for a course called AI Bootcamp course. And that way I could have a tutor alongside with the course. That's my very specific use case that I'm building this for. We have some for our internal company data, for example, with our policies where people could chat with it. I'll show you a ton of different use cases here on the next page when we actually set this up with a system prompt. But all you have to do is add any type of files that you want to use as your knowledge base. Again, same kind of thing when you build a custom GPT, usually you start with a knowledge base and then a set of instructions that you wanna fine tune there. So you could see on the right side, the free version right now has a 400,000 character limit. And even though this course has over two hours worth of transcription is still within that limit of building this custom chatbot. When you get the paid plans, this goes much, much higher. I believe it's 11 million character limit for just the very first plan that they, that they have as a paid upgrade. I'm gonna go ahead and create the chatbot from here. Now, it only took a few seconds here to get us to this next page. And here is our playground. The very first page is the playground. And on the playground, you could actually test your chatbot right over here without any customization. But I wanna show you a lot of customizations that you actually wanna change, including what large language model you want to power this chatbot. Because by default, it is using a version of ChatGPT, GPT 4.0 right now. Now I'm gonna ask it, what is Claude? So one of the transcripts that I actually added here was related to Claude. And this is gonna pull something from my transcript, which is really nice. So this is not just like using ChatGPT and getting some random answer. This is actually gonna use the knowledge base that I uploaded and give me something very specific to what I'm covering. For example, the way I know that is Claude Artifact is something that ChatGPT doesn't have the up-to-date knowledge to answer by default, it usually has to go search the web. This is not doing that. This is looking inside of my own documentation to give me the specific answer here. And if I wanna show the sources, I could go ahead and click down here to show the sources. This is showing me exactly where it got that information from, 
which is from section 1.8, the Claude tutorial. And he got the answer that is giving me from there. Now, let me show you this side panel here because this will show you some of the customization options. Again, in the playground, but up here, you'll see different tabs that I'm gonna cover in a second. Right now, the model that is powering this chatbot is GPT-40, but as I mentioned, we have other options. For example, Claw 3.5 Sonnet, I think might be even a better version of a large language model than GPT-4 for this type of thing. So I might wanna switch it and kind of create a Claw project instead by choosing this model here. And I'm gonna switch our system instructions in a second too. And we also have a couple of really good models from Gemini. This is Google's large language model, which is getting better and better all the time. And we have GPT-40 mini. So they do add new large language models, usually near the time that they get released by the bigger companies, they do add them inside a chat base as well. And over here, the system prompt, I'll show you, these are the different types of use cases, just as an example. Right now, I'm building an AI chatbot tutor, right? So this system instructions is what is picked by default, which is a good one for what I'm using it for. But if you're building a customer support agent, you may want something different for your system instructions. Sales agents, right? You could see you have different things over here you could choose from, or you could type in your own custom prompt, which I'm gonna show you a prompt generator, free one that I built that you could go ahead and use to create these. OpenAI and Claude both also have different prompt generators that I've made different videos about that help you come up with this prompt right here. This is called your system prompt. So it typically has a role. So this is the primary function of this chatbot. You are an AI chatbot who helps users with their questions, right? Then it has constraints and you could really flush these up. But by default, they do have some really good pre-built ones you could choose from depending on what kind of chatbot you're building over here. But let's go to the settings tab on the top. Now, a few different things I wanted to show you on the left panel. The AI tab right here lets you choose and save your large language model that is powering this chatbot. Again, if you're not too familiar with these, GPT-4 is a good one by default and Claw 3.5 Sonnet, it would be my preferred choice when building these out, but you could actually choose between the two or try any of these models and see how your chatbot reacts. That's what that playground tab was for, to kind of get a back and forth feeling about how that's gonna to respond to you to make sure it's going the right direction. If it's not, you wanna tweak the system instructions right over here. So that's the very first thing I like to change. Obviously, if you're just replicating a custom GPT, this is what you want to choose. Then down here, as I mentioned, the instructions will go down over here. And I'm gonna show you the custom GPT I built to actually create these custom instructions. Okay, this is a public GPT I have on the ChatGPT website. Its only job is to create custom instructions that you could use as what's called a system prompt. You're prompting that chatbot to talk a very specific way. Okay, so I'm gonna just type in your helpful generative AI tutor. And what this should do is it will turn any simple prompt like this and create a much more comprehensive prompt. And then I could go ahead and copy that and use that as my system instruction. So I could just copy and paste that set of instructions over here instead. Their default instructions are pretty good too, so you could usually just do some basic editing to them as well. And as I mentioned, OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT and Claude, do have these type of generators that I've covered in different videos. So I'll go ahead and link those in the resources below. Those do a really good job too. If you get stuck with these instructions and you need a little bit of help, temperature, this is a little bit more technical and it's set kind of close to zero here, but it says zero to one slider. And all it's doing is the closer to zero, the more predictable the response is. So it's gonna really not try to go and get creative with it. If you go all the way to one, it's gonna get really creative and it's probably not what you are gonna want out of this chatbot. By default, it's set to zero and in this specific one, I found it to do a pretty good job. It's not too repetitive, but in some cases, I like to bump this up maybe a point or two to see if I want it to be a little bit more creative and not super reserved. This is totally up to you. And you wanna just kind of try it out, go to the playground, change this number, see what you get. By default, it's set to zero over here on the reserve side and then go ahead and save it from here. Now under chat interface, you could actually change exactly how this chatbot looks on your website. So usually it's this bubble right here. People click it and it opens it up like this. You could see they have one on their website as well. If I click it, this is what theirs looks like. This is the chat based one they have on their website. But you could change that. You could change what this looks like. You could change what the starting message is over here. 
You could actually decide to collect users' feedback. This has all kinds of different settings. They have a dark theme too. Depending on your website, you may want to choose that. In my case, my website is already dark, so I'm going to choose the light theme. You could change the profile picture. So I'll show you, I'll upload one here. And there we go. So this is just part of our logo here, the icon. So that will look like that. You could change the chat icon. You could upload that. That's what this is if you want something different. And again, all these you could explore on your own pretty straightforward there. I'm going to save it from here. Now, anytime you could go back to the source tab over here, and if you upload more data over here, all you have to do is press retrain chatbot, and it will go ahead and go through this documents again, and then update its own knowledge base. So this is very, very useful. So you don't always have to create this from scratch. You could just keep updating to it, which again, custom GPTs work in a similar way. And then if you go to the connect tab right over here, all you have to do is save this publicly because this is going to be public on my website. So I'm going to make this public in order to add it to my website. And it gives you two different types of ways to add it. You have this thing called iframe, very straightforward way to add it, or it gives you this kind of script. Now, you don't have to be technical at all to use these because this iframe, every website builder has something for you to add this type of code to it in a very simple way. So I'll show you on mine. I'm going to show you with this website builder called Framer, but every single website builder from WordPress to Wix to Squarespace has this kind of thing where if you insert something, they have something called embed code. It kind of looks like this, where you could grab it and put it wherever on your website that you want to add it to. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and add it over here. And then over here, it has this section for embedding code, which was that iframe code that I just copied and pasted. This is just HTML code. And it will look like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and resize it. So mine needs to be resized a bit more. And if I preview this, this is a full screen embed. So sometimes you may want to embed it this way. I kind of like it this way, but you could also do it as a chat bubble, which I'll show you. But then anybody could interact with this chat bot. What is mid journey? And as you could see, it's answering things based on my knowledge base. And this is again, powered by chat GPT. So if it doesn't know something from your knowledge base, it still does have the power of chat GPT is still powered by GPT 4.0 and it'll try to answer that. But you could limit that if you don't want it to do that with your set of system instructions to make sure it just says, I don't know if it doesn't know from your knowledge base. So you have a lot of control there, but you can see this works really well on the website. And if you want to add this as a chat bubble, this is the code. And then you would do that exact same thing I just showed you. And this is the chat bubble on the website. So you could kind of collapse it and make it bigger. And it was the same kind of thing. If you just want to see what it looks like on the chat based website, they're using their own product. So if you click it, it will open it like this on top of your website. So you don't need to leave a lot of extra space for it. And it'll just be right over here in the corner where people are used to seeing these little chatbots. And they actually have different ways for integration. So you could connect it with Zapier, turn this into an AI agent. You could connect it to WordPress. If you're just directly going to WordPress from here, they have integrations, all kinds of different things you could do with this that you could explore on your own. But this is a really easy way to get the power of custom GPTs or cloud projects right inside of your website as a full embed or as a chat bubble with all kinds of different use cases. So I want to thank Chatbase for partnering with me on this, for making this process so easy. I think anybody could have this up and running in less than 10 minutes. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. I will catch you on the next video.